hello everyone and welcome to another youtube video and this is our data set and we are going to be using this data set to actually learn how to perform simple linear regression and multiple linear regression in ibm spss so basically uh, the simple linear regression is used to predict the value of a single dependence variable from just a single independent variable and uh, the and for the multiple linear regression you have to have like a single dependent variable you are trying to predict the single dependent variable from several or multiple independent variable so some of the assumptions for linear regression include both multiple and the symbol is that uh your variables that you're working with must actually be on the interval scale or the ratio scale uh, these variables must actually be normally distributed we also need to assume that uh, there is actually a linear relationship between these two variables we also need to pay attention to the fact that the very uh, the variations between the variables are actually uh the same that's what we call the homo scedacity we don't want hetero scedacity that is a difference in variation we want homo scedacity the same variations among other assumptions but these are like the key assumptions that we have to pay attention to so we are assuming that the variables right here have actually obeyed the assumptions that we need to like you know have for us to perform a simple linear regression or a multiple linear regression so let's start with simple linear regression all you have to do is to come to analyze uh then you come to regression now once you come to regression you're going to be seeing a whole lot of regressions right here we have from automatic linear modeling to curve estimations to binary so our attention is just on the linear so we just pay attention to the linear in the long run as time goes on we are going to get into all of those other types of linear regression so let's start with linear and it brings out this dialogue okay so we have the dependence variable which is the y so we can only have just a single dependence variable and we can have several independence variable so let's start with us just getting the wheelbase as a dependence variable and then uh, let's say the car height as the independent variable so we have just one dependent one independent okay now we can come to the statistics to see if we can pick whatever thing we want so for the regression coefficient if you want a 95% confidence interval, you can click on that. If you want a covariance matrix, you can click on that. You know, um, I just need uh, the model fit. I need the R squared change. You may want to click on the descriptive statistics. That is um, the mean, median, mode, and variance of each of the variables. You know, just pick anything you want to pick. The part and partial correlations. I think I'm okay with just the model fit and the R squared change. And then once I'm okay, I click on continue. The plots, you know, you can just choose any of those plots, which for now it's not really needed. You can choose the histogram, the normal plot, you know. So we really don't want to touch all of those right now. So let's just leave all of that. And once you've decided on everything you need to do, just click on OK. It runs the code and it gives you the so this is everything right here. Now it has like three uh four sections for you. So this is a dialogue for the variables you are working with. Uh secondly, we have the model summary that is things like the R. We have the R squared, we have the adjusted R squared, we have the standard error of the estimate, we have the R squared change, we have the F change, we have you know all of those. Then we have the ANOVA. So automatically um SPSS will perform an ANOVA for you. That is to see if there's a difference in the in the mean and we have the coefficient also so let's dissect each of this so the r right here represents the correlation coefficient between the dependent variable and the independent variable so in this case of us we have a 0 0.589 correlation coefficient between the two variables that we are actually talking about okay so the r squared is what we call the coefficient of determination and this defines the percentage of variations in the dependence variable that can actually be explained by the independent variable in quotes it tells us how accurate our regression model is in this case of ours we have a 0 0.347 r squared uh we can say a 34.7 percent r squared the adjusted r squared is simply the coefficient of determination but this time the model considered the number of independent variable that we have in our model we also have the standard error and we have the r change and all of those they are really not needed but these are the three that we have to pay attention to for the ANOVA we can just ignore that it's not really something important to us right now so our dependent variable is the wheelbase our independent variable is the car height we are trying to predict the wheelbase from the car height now if you come right here you're going to be seeing the coefficient uh in this case for a simple linear regression we need the slope which is the 
a better and we need the intercept so for the slope we have car height right here so the coefficient of the slope is a uh, 1.453 that's a 1.453 right here and the constant which is, which is the intercept rather is actually 20.716 now the standard error of the coefficient that is for the slope is 0 0.140 and for the intercept we have um 0. Point, sorry we have 7.514 uh the standardized coefficient for beta we have the data 0 0.589 spss actually performed an hypothesis test on the value of the slope and the intercept so the test statistics when the hypothesis was performed on the slope is actually 10.396 and the slope is actually significant at a one percent level of significance as you can see our p-value is lesser than 0 0.01 and for this intercept which is the constant uh the test statistics when the hypothesis test was performed was 2.757 and the test is also having this p value of 0 0.06 which is obviously lesser than 0 0.01 so that means this uh constant is also significant at a one percent level of significance so the equation for our regression model is going to be y which is the wheelbase is actually equals to 1.453 times x which is the the car height plus 20.716 where 20.716 is the intercept so let's go back to our data and this time let's try to like uh have a multiple linear regression so let's do that so we come to analyze we come to regression linear then this time instead of just having just a single dependent variable uh, a single independent variable rather we can actually add more let's say uh car width let's let's say engine size uh let's say stroke so we have just one dependent variable and we have uh, four independent variables so we click on okay it runs the code for us and we have this now if you notice the model summary some values have changed this time we have our r which is the correlation coefficient between the dependent variable and all of the independent variables so you can see we have the predictors that is stroke car height engine size and car width so the correlation coefficient of the model as a whole that is the dependence with the independence is actually 0 0.886 uh, the r squared is the coefficient of determination like i said earlier on and it explains uh the variation in the dependent explained by the independence okay and we have that to be 78.5 percent the adjusted r also this time it is actually the coefficient of determination but it has actually um consider that we have like four variables so if you notice the r squared is now better okay that's 0 0.781 compared to the one we had initially where the r squared was like 0 0.344 so it makes sense that if you want to increase the accuracy of your model you have to in impute more variables so if you are trying to determine the car at the wheelbase rather from the car height only your model won't be very accurate just see the values right here but if you ink if you impute more variables it actually increases and all like that so this is just the model summary and when we come to the coefficient we can see all of this right here now let's start with the intercept which is the constant we have uh, the intercept as minus 73.822 uh the slope of the car height is a uh, 1.029 and uh, the slope of the car width is a uh, 1.0 for the engine size we have 0 0.012 and for the stroke we have a uh, 1.076 our dependent variable is still the wheel base and like i said earlier on hypothesis test was actually performed okay and uh, all of this from the constants to the car heights to the width they are all significant at a one percent level of significance but the engine size and the stroke the coefficient values are actually not significant because 0 0.094 is greater than 0 0.01 and 0 0.097 is also greater than 0 0.01 so that simply implies that our test is not significant at a one percent level of significance please note that the decision rule is that if your p-value okay is greater than alpha your level of significance it means that your test is not significant and if your p-value is lesser than your alpha that is your level of significance it means that your test is actually significant so 
this 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 and this are all significant and these two are not significant so the equation of the model or we can say the multiple linear regression model is going to be uh there's a wheelbase which is a y is equals to so let's start with the stroke that's going to be 1.076 x1 that is the first variable plus 0.012 x2 plus 1.0 1.703 x3 uh, plus 1.029 x4 minus 73.822 and that is the equation that defines the regression model of the situation of this data set as a whole so you can actually impute more independent variables and it's going to like increase the accuracy of your regression model i hope you've learned something and i hope i've been able to teach you how to perform multiple and simple linear regression in spss if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to this youtube channel i will see you in the next one bye for now